All right, guys. Um, we are going to uh, start soon, right? Uh, while waiting for more people to come in, uh, just to let you guys know who are already in this live uh, broadcast, we have uh, on paper, right? This is a, an overwhelming webinar, actually. We have got around almost 500 plus people, right? And um, hopefully that uh, every one of you guys, your bandwidth should be okay, right? So um, uh, let's uh, give around five to 10 more minutes before we start. Okay, uh, just to test uh, the session right now, those of you who are already in, uh, are you guys able to hear me out correctly? I can see some people already started to uh, greet on the Q&A. Just would like to know whether uh, everyone here is good to hear me out. Okay, Alex, Ui, yep, you can hear me loud and clear. Very good. I guess we just need to test out uh, the session. Right, thank you very much, guys. Okay, um, just a, a brief note here, uh, because this webinar is um, it's almost like a conference already, okay, because uh, there are a lot of people, right, that's uh, an overwhelming response. So um, please do allow uh, some sort of, a, uh, you know, maybe the bandwidth kind of thing, right? So because um, due to the COVID-19 uh, situation now, Microsoft has already uh, deprioritized uh, some of the bandwidth gave okay, for the first responders as well as the medical uh, personnel, the medical industry. So please do bear with us. All right. Okay, um, the Q&A box okay, that you guys have been typing at the site there, right? Um, yes, uh, it's not really a chat session, okay? So because that's the place where um, if you guys were to have any questions, okay, then uh, we have got a few producers from InfoTrack here that will be attending to you shortly, right? And this is also a place for you guys to ask me any questions later on, right? So the session is going to be two hours until 4.30 but I would actually end around 4.15 to allow 15 minutes um, Q&A session, right? Q&A, but in between the session, right? Okay, I will also be monitoring the Q&A, right? Because we've got three producers here, uh, which is going to monitor the chat, monitor the Q&A, 
and they are going to publish those questions again okay, that uh, would, would be more significant to the um, session, all right? Because um, uh, we don't simply publish anything else again okay, that uh, you know people are trying to get confirmation or something like that, all right? So we will get um, the moderators okay to attend to you shortly. Uh, let's say, for example, if you want to know how this course works, you know, and uh, what would be the date, any promotional price, and stuff like that, okay? OK, now um, I have already started to receive some question about uh, my presentation deck and all that. Now, please take note that uh, the PowerPoint slide that I have here okay, is just a two, <laughs> a two slide kind of thing, right? Just to tell you guys uh, what this webinar is all about. But this is going to be a live demo. All right, it's going to be all demo all the way okay, uh, to let you guys have a preview of an end to end for Power Apps. Power Automate as well as Power BI. How are we going to have uh, a way to exploit the features of Power App, creating an app and then um, inbuilt with the workflow and the business process until the analytics part. And uh, those of you who are already in, please do take note okay, that this session is actually a sneak preview of the entire five days course okay, that I've created. Right, and uh, these are the things again that you will be experiencing in the actual five days training, right? But this is going to be just only two hours, and I'm sure that I don't have enough time, okay, to run you guys through everything, right? So um, this is just to grab your, your, you guys, your attention, okay, and what you can do, and try to explore the possibilities of uh, utilizing Power Platform, okay? So I guess uh, we can start already. Uh, Hang on, yeah. Let me just need to do a check. Okay, I guess uh, we should be able to start right now because there are already 300 and plus people already in the session. Okay, so I would like to welcome you guys, uh, uh, those of you who have just um, um, started. All right, and um, I'm going to uh, very much uh, start right now. So what you can see here, right, okay, this uh, PowerPoint slide. Okay, I'm sure that everybody will be able to look at it right now. Uh, the title of this webinar is called Upping Your NT in Productivity with Microsoft Power Platform. Okay, now for those of you who may have already heard about this thing called Power Platform, now please take note okay, that this is not entirely new because it has already been uh, the uh, product right, since uh, last year. Okay, but Power Apps and Power Automate and Power BI alone has been around for a couple of years. Now let's just say Power BI. Now, I'm not sure how many of you here have attended my training. Um, maybe some of you guys know me, right? Uh, some of you guys don't. Um, those of you who have um, attended a Power BI, you have already uh, been using Power BI, right? You know that this has always been a great product, okay, for this past three, four years, okay? Now, when Power Apps came out, right, okay, it is just uh, a direction by Microsoft to replace InfoPath, all right, which is a form builder kind of thing, right? But then the possibilities, would be endless, right? Ultimately, Microsoft see okay the potential of Power Apps, and together with Flow, which is a, a new um, UI, it's a new kind of feature okay that allows uh, uh, users to be able to build their own workflow without having to write any code. All right, now workflow stuffs and all that right okay, used to be quite a dramatic thing whereby a lot of people okay, think that, oh, I think I can only get my IT people to go and build the workflow for me, right? But since uh, those of you who have also know about SharePoint, now for those SharePoint crowd here, right? You should know about um, in SharePoint, you are able to build workflows, but strictly through a product called SharePoint Designer. 
Now, even the SharePoint designer part, okay, it's not really a fantastic way of building a workflow. So, but, and that workflow lives within the scope of SharePoint alone. Now, ultimately, Microsoft needs to leverage okay, on um, what would you call the uh, uh, a platform for a workflow to fire, right? Okay, for the entire Office 365. So that is when Microsoft Flow was released. And it's only somewhere late last year, okay, they have renamed the word uh, or the name uh, Microsoft Flow into Power Automate. Because you see, when they come up with the uh, Power Platform, right, they have got Power Apps and Power BI but only flow alone doesn't have the word power. So they've changed the name to Power Automate, okay, which is practically um, uh, a member to get to officially make them a member of Power Platform. Okay, so within this, right, okay, you've got to see very quickly, right, okay, how I start with Power Apps, then um, how I do Power Automate, how to create a workflow from there very quickly, and how do I generate a report based on the data that I've already captured. OK, so those of you who are in here, OK, welcome. Uh, my name is Gerald. I can see that people are still starting to trickle in and um, I still can see that uh, you are. Some of you guys don't um, can't hear much, can't hear a thing. Um, I guess our, our producer need to really address this uh, soon. I guess the sound or the voice okay, will go in soon. All right. Now, let me just run through the next one. Okay, so now this is a screenshot of what we will develop. Okay, something like a, a business scenario that we will do. Like for example, imagine an organization where every three years, right, employees go through a hardware refresh cycle. Now, all in all, right, okay, I'm going to show you how I develop, okay, an app okay, that looks similar like something like you see here, which is called a device ordering app. Now this app, right, okay, allows you or uh, the employees, right, okay, to browse through any laptops or tablets or any devices, right, from different sort of manufacturers, different brands, right, and they can order you know, the uh, device, right, okay, through the app. And any order that is actually logged, okay, that is submitted through this app, right, will be placed into a storage, right, and uh, then, of course, there will be a workflow in the background, okay, that is going to uh, seek for approval from the manager. Right, depending on the procurement process, the approval process and all that. So this is also the data can be regulated and aggregated so that at the end of the day, right, okay, even the uh, managers or the department can generate a report in Power BI, right, to look at the popularity of the, uh, how, how much, what is the expenditure and stuff like that, okay. So ultimately, we were going to start with Power Apps, okay. So the objectives, number one, okay, is to be able to develop something called the Power Apps Canvas App. This would be for employee facing for them to perform uh, their device ordering. But all this data would need to go to somewhere. All right. Now, please take note, my full five day course okay, will cover two types of storages. Number one, of course, we're going to talk about CDS, Common Data Service. Now, Common Data Service, right, okay, from the name, it means that Microsoft has already decided to have one way of storing data. Right, and uh, you guys do not need to question Microsoft and ask, hey, is this storage, right? Is it SQL or is it Oracle? Is it what platform is that? So you don't need to worry about that because it's transparent. They call it common data service because it's a service on the cloud, especially for you to store records and records and records, data and data. And it's common, all right? It is now used by Power Apps. And of course, it is connectable to Power BI. So um, later on, I'm going to show you that. Okay, as well as uh, what Microsoft's the next few years direction would be to, of course, expose common data service up to the entire Microsoft 365 service. Okay, so this would be actually available, right, for the entire Office 365 together, of course, um, Microsoft 365. And of course, uh, there is something called Power Apps Model Driven. Now, um, this part, okay, I've got no time to actually uh, show in this two-hour um, uh, session. So I'm just going to explain to you what I mean by Model Driven App because there are two types of apps that you guys can build using Power Apps. Number one is called a Canvas App. Canvas App, right, okay, it's a traditional app that you uh, use it, okay, by normal users, uh, be, it, uh, be it on the uh, internet, okay, through an internet browser or also from uh, a mobile phone, okay? Uh, I don't care whether it's going to be iOS or whether it's Android, okay? And of course, the model driven on the other hand, right, okay, it's actually a complete application for the employees working in the company to process, okay? These are the back office workers, right, okay? They use this website. It is actually a website, 
which they use okay, to start the process of procurement. For example, when one particular employee used the Canvas app to place an order of a laptop or a device. Now, this is going to be submitted into the back end storage, which is CDS. And the back office worker who sits in front of that model driven app right, will see the appearance of a new uh, order being placed. And this is whereby this particular employee will follow a, a, a predefined process of placing the order, process the order, right? for example, ordering that device from a manufacturer, wait for the delivery. Then when it gets delivered, you know how we're going to actually install, format that particular device until the delivery time okay, to the particular employee. All right, so that's called a model driven app. Uh, I've already placed this uh, soon, uh, I mean already, okay, which I've already created, but um, I won't be showing you the process for that. Uh, but in the uh, uh, full five days course, you guys will be able to explore every single one of this. Okay, of course, Power Automate is used to build an approval workflow, as you can see in the screenshot here. Right, very simple. Uh, there are many things that you can do, many types of workflow that you can build using Power Automate. But of course, one of the most the first and foremost uh, popular type of workflow that can build, of course, is to build an approval workflow. All right. For example, when an employee in our scenario want to make a purchase of, let's say, a particular device, let's say a Dell laptop, which is worth, let's say, two thousand dollars. Right. But depending on the approval process, right, okay, if it's less than uh, five hundred dollars, right. I'm talking about in US dollar, yeah, right? So if the device costs less than or equals to $500, then you do not need any approval, immediately uh, submit the process. But if let's say it's above $500, like $1,000 or $2,000, you need your manager to approve it. So this particular uh, workflow, it's built using Power Automate. And of course, lastly, at the end, you can see this will be a sample report of how Power BI is used to visualize the device order data. OK, so these will be the things okay, that uh, it, it, it drops out the flow of what we we're going to build and what I'm going to demonstrate to you. Of course, the intricate details of how each and every one of this will be done, right? OK, um, of course, it's going to be covered in the training. So right now I'm just going to show you right here roughly how I get started. OK, so that's only what I have okay, for my PowerPoint slide. Yeah, so right now what I want to do here, right? OK, is I'm going to show you OK, my screen right now. OK, where uh, everybody can see my screen perfectly. OK, um, I'm using uh, Microsoft Edge, OK, the latest Edge here. All right, so so far, right, OK, uh, I can hear, I can see uh, quite a number of you guys um, have some bandwidth problem with um, not able to listen or cannot hear anything. So I believe you guys need to uh, yeah, log out and log in again, probably, all right, because they're just uh, uh, overwhelming here, all right. And of course, uh, there's a question okay, that uh, the Microsoft data service, common data service information will be exposed to external. Okay, now the common data service, right, okay, it's an internal uh, storage, right, for a particular application. Now it is not exposed to external because the common data service requires license actually. All right, now uh, I'm gonna try to go through a Q and A session right towards the end, okay, but uh, some things such as licensing, okay, I'll need to uh, talk about it, okay, in a separate session because I can only redirect you guys to a proper uh, or the official Microsoft website for that. Because some of the things here, okay, may not come in free, especially common data service. So that is why I've actually trained Power Platform before, all right, whereby sometimes people would say that, hey, I do not want to make use of common data service. I have actually did some research and this is expensive, all right? So why? Can, can you do Power Platform without common data service? Well, the answer, of course, is yes. All right, you can actually connect to uh, maybe your SQL server. You can connect to even your data coming from SharePoint. So that is why my five day course, right, okay, even not just focus on common data service, but to even uh, um, address, okay, and to satisfy people who say that I'm not going to use common data service. I would like all my data to be stored in SharePoint, which people can see. All right, but this common data service is something that is awfully complex to explain actually but it is easy for you to understand it's just that how i'm going to explain to you because there are some intricate details about it being like a database right you can think of it something like an sql server it's like a database right but to some end users who say that hey i'm not exposed to database can i not have database can all my data be stored in excel this is the most popular uh, so-called request to me 
I said, well, Excel, obviously, that's a number one preferred choice. Then secondly, we go down to SharePoint. Then only we talk about this common data service. You see, Microsoft push it in such a way that Power Platform must introduce uh, CDS, must talk about common data service. It's their way of doing business whereby they want you guys to have a, a, a platform that can store your data right okay, without having to worry about what is in the underlying feature. What is the, 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 the brand? Uh, what is the platform in the underlying? Is, is it Oracle? Do I need to have some special connectors to it and all that? Actually, everything is transparent, okay? So uh, no information will be exposed to the external people in your common data service because it's under license by your individual organization. OK, all right. So um, now what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to show you if everybody can hear uh, see me right. OK, I'm going to go into my office dot uh, com here. I'm just going to sign in OK, to my own uh, account here. OK, so it's going to be all uh, uh, demonstration from here on. So I'm just going to go into my Power Apps. Okay, I'm going to begin with Power Apps right now just to show you. Now, under make.powerapps.com. Okay, so if you guys can see me right, okay, in your typical Office 365, right, okay, you should be able to see something like there you go. You got Power Apps here, you got Power BI, and of course, you've got your Power Automate. Okay, but I'm going to go into Power Apps, the first one here, as you can see. All right, and this is how Power Apps slightly looks like, okay, and uh, which I am going to show you how I can click create at a site here, right, for you guys to look at what we can start to create or how we should start this. Now, if you look at it, right, okay, we can create a blank canvas app as well as a model driven app and something new, right, okay, is called a portal. Now, you can see this portal, right, okay, Microsoft introduced, right, like for towards late last year, whereby the portal, right, okay, looks something like um, you have your own SharePoint site. It's for those people right, okay, who do not have an official website right, at, that acts as an interface that links to other resources. So let's say you don't have SharePoint, all right? So they still allow you to build at least okay, a portal that represents somewhat like a SharePoint, okay? But the branding, it's all about your app. You don't need a SharePoint that the branding can be maybe towards your entire department or your organization. OK, so but anyway, I'm not going to talk about the portal here because majority of the time, right? Uh, uh, my addressing of this particular scenario is based on people who have Power Apps, who have Power Automate, as well as Power BI, part of the Office 365. So ultimately, you may have SharePoint in this case. OK, so what I'm going to do, right? OK, I'm going to start by creating a Canvas app from blank. So I've got no time to lose here. I'm going to show you that uh, the app, right? Okay, what kind of app can I build? All right, based on this right here, you can see that the app I can start uh, whether it's going to be uh, I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name. So let's say uh, device um, order ring uh, device ordering. OK, so I'm just going to call it device ordering demo. OK, and you can see the format right? whether it's going to be a phone app or it can be a tablet app. All right. Now, the difference between a phone app and a tablet app is when you choose phone layout, it's going to be portrait. If you choose tablet, it's going to be landscape. So I'm going to choose tablet, even though it says tablet, but it can still be loaded on the phone. Now, the aspect ratio for your screen size of that particular app, right? You no longer need to worry about it, right? Because it is ultimately uh, automatic. Okay, they have automatic detection uh, for the aspect ratio when you launch the app. Right, whether it's going to be on the tablet or on the phone, well, it's automatically adjusted. So I want it to be a landscape app. Okay, so that's why I choose tablet. So I'm going to click create here. And you can see they launch another new tab here, right, under uh, as.create.powerapps.com. Okay. All right. So as you can see, they call this uh, as the Power Apps Studio. All right. So I'm just going to skip this. And you can see that I've got a landscape uh, blank app. So you can see I've been given a screen, right? screen one that's how i started with and this studio right can used to be where you guys can download uh, an app right onto your windows but microsoft decided nothing needed to be installed already so the entire studio right okay, the uh, development the design uh, workloads are all accomplishable directly on the browser so you don't need to download anything okay all right, so that's uh, uh, um, uh, for now. OK, so with screen one, uh, I didn't think I, it's best practice for me to rename the screen. So uh, I'm going to call this, right, let's say, um, main screen. OK, it's going to be called main screen. OK, 
So once I've got this screen here, okay, maybe I'm going to sort of like uh, do a simple design. So uh, first place, I'm going to insert, let's say at the top, as you can see, these are all the things that I have. I can insert labels, I've got buttons, I've got text boxes, I've got a lot of input stuff here. I can insert combo box, drop downs, check boxes, all right? And then you've got tables, you know, that forms the media. Like for example, I want to insert a camera and an image. Even I can detect uh, uh, videos from Microsoft Stream, right? I can have charts, I can see. Even I can insert and embed a Power BI tile directly into my Power App. So it's really, really fancy. Okay, that's what Power uh, Platform uh, does. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to insert a label. Okay, just a quick one. I'm going to click on the label. As you can see, it shows up from here. And this label, immediately I'm not going to rename it. Now you see, first and foremost, right, people who always come for my class, okay, now even though you might be a person working in HR, okay, you might be a person working in sales. You see, the beauty part about Power Platform, right? Okay, why Microsoft put it in this way? Because it's actually finally a product for all walks of life. I don't need you to be an IT person, all right? Because we are not doing any programming here. You're now finally able to build your own app. You will be very proud that you're able to build an app, right? That can actually even sit inside your phone, runnable and launchable from your phone, even though you do not know programming. All you need to know, right, okay, is at least Okay, how formulas work and the formula looks exactly something like your Excel formula. Okay, so that's uh, roughly okay, what uh, we have here. Okay, uh, okay uh, I do have a question as in, uh, uh, what is the limitation of using Power Platform? Do you recommend developers who have been coding in C Sharp to use Power Platform? Okay, now let me just answer this question first for a while. Okay, um, for those of you who are already on programming, let's say you have got a bunch of developers building um, using C Sharp and all that. Okay, now most of the time, right, okay, what I recommend is, uh, what I suggest is that these apps, right, okay, may be able to compensate, okay, whatever that you've been building so far, all right, minus all the intricate details. But remember, this particular uh, app that you built, right, is really only for business and it's really most of the time for capturing business information. It is not really where you, you, whereby you can uh, build an app that can fly, they can do a lot of wonders, you know, they can do a lot of uh, intricate processes and all that. You see, this is to allow users, right, to build something like a form. All this while they rely on a form to fill in information, like for example, uh, all this while you want to create a leaf application form that survive inside SharePoint. So you're going to uh, apply for leave, you got to log into a SharePoint and you got to go into that your, your uh, HR, let's say HR SharePoint site and you want to fill in okay, the form which is happened to be inside SharePoint. But now you can actually uh, take out the entire leave application form and wrap it into an app. Okay, and some more, you do not need to rely to uh, log into your SharePoint to fire up the form and to fill up the form. This whole leaf application form, now it's an app and some more it is inside your phone. Any point of time, wherever you are, right? Okay, as long as you got internet access, I think everybody's phone do have internet access now, you can just launch the app and apply leaf directly from there. All right, with the submit of the button, the data goes to the back end, all right, and then the power uh, automate, the workflow will be there to regulate, seek for approval from your manager and da da da. All right, so everything is fully automated in the background. So that's the whole idea about uh, power uh, this power platform here, okay? All right, so now um, I will ed editing the rest of the questions soon, yeah? Okay, so uh, I need to start building this thing first. So let me show you, just continue with the demo here first. And uh, I want to actually show you this. When I add the label here, you can see the default text is called text. And you can see it's all controlled from here. Now there are many ways for you to change the text here. You see, directly on the formula bar, that's a text here. They can tell you the data type is text. At the right hand side, okay, there's a property, text, also called text. You see, if I change here, Compared to a change here, right? It's the same thing, right? So why not I just change here? So I'm just going to call this as uh, device ordering, right? Uh, demo, I just call it like this, okay? So I'm going to make this, okay, wider a bit. Okay, I'm going to resize the label, all that. So I'm going to put it right at the top here. I'm going to resize it like this. So probably what I can do, I want to fix it, okay, to a certain width and height. So now I have to rely on the right-hand side here in the properties pane here. Right, I'm going to look for the width and height here, which is happened to be here. As you can see, it's the size. So the width is 1366 pixels, and the height I want to set it to be 80 pixels, maybe like this. 
So I can type directly the width and height here. So no problem. Okay, and of course the uh, alignment for this guy, all right? I can actually change the alignment at the home tab here. I can go and change the alignment to center. So you can see that it's already center. And I'm gonna set the fill color right here, maybe to a certain blue. Maybe I want to change it to, let's say this color, this blue color, okay? And of course, again, the font size, I'm gonna change the font size here to 24, okay? And of course, the font color, I can see the font color here, make it white. So it looks something like this, okay? Of course, these are all cosmetic stuff and all that, okay? And uh, what I can do, continue, right, okay, is of course to show you that I can even drag, okay, a user, okay, I'm gonna have another label. Let me go to insert here, create a label. I'm gonna put a label all the way to the right-hand side here, okay, something like this. And in the text here, okay, for now, what I'm gonna do, right, okay, as you can see, the formula here, Okay, I'm going to do the hello is as a greeting, right? Comma. See, this is a text. I'm going to concatenate. Okay, I'm going to join this. Okay, with a function called user. As you can see, there's a there's always IntelliSense provided for you. I'm just going to call it user. It's a function user dot. After that, I can call user dot email. You want to display email or user dot full name. I'm just going to choose full name here. So if I choose user full name, as you can see there, my name, Gerald Hong, is out, as you can see, because they automatically using user, they are connected to my Office 365 and they can detect who is the currently logged in user. So you can see it is now shown here. So if you log in as maybe, let's say, um, Sam, then we say, hello, Sam. If you log in as Mary, then it will be hello, comma, Mary, right? As simple as that. And I'm gonna change it to white color as well. Okay, Sim simple, easy, all right? And for what I'm going to do right okay, soon, okay, is of course, I can also immediately click this. As you can see, it's like a stethoscope app checker. When I click the app checker, right, it's a good way for you, them to analyze currently as of until this point of time, how much errors or anything that you have. So you can see any formula errors, nope, nothing. Any runtime errors, no. Nope. Any rules, accessibility, performance errors. So this app checker is quite nice because as you start going venturing into this app design, they will start checking the app for you. Okay, live. So no problem so far. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, okay, I'm just going to also show you in the background. If I go to file, all right, you can see this is in the region where I can change the name of my app and also an icon. Now they have given us some predefined icons here. Let's say maybe I choose this particular icon like this, all right? And what is the color scheme? Maybe I choose this color, as you can see. This is the tile, okay, that represents your, um, your app, all right? Well, if you do not like all this, you can browse and look for your own 245 by 245 pixel type of size, right? Whether it's a PNG or JPEG file, okay? Next thing would be, if you look at it, is your screen size and orientation. So the screen size plus orientation, as you can see here, there you go. For a tablet, right, in landscape by default, okay, using a ratio of 16 to 9, which is giving me now 1366 by 768, right? So you can see also for a white screen, 1610, okay, you can see it's 1229 by 768 um, resolution. So for iPad, it's a 4.3, as you can see. For Surface Pro 3, they have a similar uh, or few types of sizes. But I'll just put in a default, which is 1,366 pixel by 768. Or you can choose custom as well. Okay. So a lot of all these advanced features, as you can see, the settings, scale to fit, lock aspect ratio, everything has been uh, automatic. So like I said, the scaling to fit is one of the best thing, right? So you can actually load it on the phone and stuff like that. Okay. So let's say for now, I'm just going to click save. As you can see, this is going to be um, the uh, way I save the app. And you can see that I can save it directly to a computer. If you happen to save your Power App on a computer, right, the file extension is a .msapp file. All right, that's an msapp file, but I can save directly to the cloud. When you save directly to the cloud, means you're gonna save it directly under your Power Apps um, organization here. Okay, your own Power Apps um, uh, subscription. So when I click save now, even though there's nothing much there, okay. And you can see that I have already saved it. Now, once I save it already, right, okay, so we can see all versions. So how many versions do I have? Because every app, as you keep on doing things, right, where every time you save, they're going to increase. So I've only got version one and it's published there. It says live. So it all depends on me now, okay, how do I um, 
uh, deploy this app. Now, let me close this first. I want to share these things to you called share. All right. Do take note that the app that you built here, right, is not the app that you guys know of where you need to install the app on every devices. All you need to do is one click of the share button here. So you can see, you can start typing in, right, okay, all the people in your organization, right, that you want to share this app out. Once you key in all the names here, their email address, as long as they are a part of the organization, then these people will be able to receive their app directly under their Power Apps account. So these users, right, okay, they all need to do, well, okay, what they all need to do is to install Power Apps on their phone. All right. On the laptop, you don't need to install anything because on the laptop, you just use your browser, right? Just log into Office 365, launch Power Apps, and you can see the app there, okay? Now, if it's on the phone, right? I'm not sure whether, I don't care actually, whether you're using iPhone, right, with iOS or on Android, okay? Uh, the App Store or Google Play Store, they will definitely have Power Apps. Just need to download that Power Apps for free, install it, right then log in with your organization account and you immediately see the app that your uh, the person who have shared to you the app will be displayed there okay so that's how you share the app you don't install things right now i'm sure by now right okay you can see um there are some people may be asking this okay as you can see, I uh, already can see one particular one called, uh, is this customer facing app? If the customer doesn't have a Microsoft account, will it be okay now? Like I say, all right, this is whereby I need to clear some air for you guys, clear the confusion. The app that you use Power Apps to build, right, okay, is definitely not an app that you can market. It's not for you to market. It's not for you to sell to your customers, all right? Power Apps is an internal business application that you use within your organization. It's not the app okay, that you think that, oh, wow, I can actually create a software. And then uh, because you are a software house, then you start, you know, uh, selling the software and all that. No. Okay. This is actually a business application supposedly to be used internally, all right, for among all your users, all right. And that's the whole idea behind this. This is actually to replace all the online forms, all the electronic forms that people used to fill up things, you know, and capture things and all that. Okay, and you can actually expose the app right, okay, to a particular team. If you're using Microsoft Teams, okay, I'm sure everybody does because you guys are now logged into this webinar session, right? So you can even have um, a few teams, right? And you push a certain app, make it available to be launchable directly in Teams. As you can see in my case here, right? Apart from sharing it, right? I can see there's a button here, add to Teams, okay? So this means, right, okay, I can click this button, add to teams. I can focus this app, right, to be a, uh, to a few teams. Maybe one app is for team A. They use this a lot among themselves. And then I create another app, right, okay, for team B. Maybe different thing, different focus for team B, all right? So that's ultimately what Power Apps is all about. So without further delay, right, like I say, I'm not going to uh, proceed to uh, keep on creating my app, you know, which is um, from still from here and all that. I'm going to show you a finished product of how the app looks like. Like I say, this app took, uh, it took me uh, in the course for five days, right? It'll take you guys almost two days to build, all right? So that's, I'm going to show you how it'll look like, okay? Let me go back to my apps here. I will show you the finished product. You see the device already demo just now, it's half baked. This is the one that it look like. Hmm. Oops, sorry. I want to show you how the, this app is already built and I can see edit. So when I go edit, this is the studio. I'm going to open up again. Just want to show you how the finished product will look like. Okay, there you go. All right. So, uh, okay, they have announced here. Okay, more reliable, concurrent, fine. Okay, I'm just going to open the app. All right. So, as you can see here, right, okay, um, there, it looks something like this. Okay, and uh, how come this is actually not in white color? Let me just go and change the font to white color. Okay, there. So you can see okay, all these pictures, where do they come from? Do I need to have go through a lot of lengths and all that? Now, please take note that the app, right? Okay, you will also learn, right? Okay, how the data connection is because all these things come from my data. Now, I want to show you at least to be fair, okay? To answer some of your question, hey, how come this guy can, can what? Do I need to like go online and search for one by one all these uh, uh, pictures? Well, of course you need 
to have a library of all these pictures. Okay, I'm sure everybody knows that, including all the brand names, as you can see. So if like, for example, if I click on, let's say HP, then you're gonna filter HP. If I click on Samsung, okay, they will be a filter, you know? But all these pictures, right, okay? Now I got it, right, okay, by host, hosting it from one of my partners in US, okay? Now, because this this content where I got, got this, right, okay, is uh, from an MVP session, all right? So ultimately, they have already um, stored this inside, okay, a network. So I'm going to show you roughly where is this file. Okay, now I've got this um, Excel file called device order data. So actually all this data comes from this Excel file. So if you look at this here, as you can see there, I've got the manufacturers. This is the manufacturer table. Can you see the logo? It's actually a URL pointing to the file, the HQ and the store, right? So all these logos, every logo, where is it, okay? And of course, okay, in terms of the devices also, the, every device is Acer, whatever model, you know, including their price, their processor speed, their memory, their storage, all the technical spe uh, specs are there, as well as the, the photo, as you can see here. So there, the picture are all connected okay, to one of the uh, web websites. So once this is actually connected to my Power Apps here, you can see that every picture can be shown. Now, if I have to play this app right now, as you can see, it looks like this. Here, I have actually played the app directly on my browser. So as you can see, okay, when I click on HP, they're going to filter only HP. So you can see that like this. So I can actually choose, let's say maybe HP, uh, I don't know much about this, maybe Elite Pad. I'm going to check there to compare. So I can also activate a comparison. So I'm going to compare this HP Elite Pad with, let's say, I click Microsoft with a Surface, let's say this Surface here, maybe this one, okay, compare. So there I can compare two items. When I click, they bring me to a different screen between Elite Pad and Surface. So I can see comparison from here, technical specs and all that. So what I can do immediately, right, okay, is whichever one I choose, right, the name is going to be shown here and the price and who's the approver. So by default, I'm actually using my own. I'm, I'm going to place my own, um, <laughs> my own, uh, what do you call, um, uh, submission okay of my own device ordering and I'm going to be the also the approver now when I key in the approval here okay this will actually fire a workflow so when I click the button here this will fire a workflow in the background right which is part of power automate and this workflow is going to send an email to this guy here which has happened to be myself as well so that I will be able to look at and review this thing and to approve or not Okay, I can also enter some cost, uh, comments here and all that. Okay, so I'm not going to place any order right now, right? So you guys have roughly seen, it's only two screens, see, back here, right? And I can actually clear the selection, right? So once I clear the selection, I can go to like Acer, I can have Asus, Dell, whatever, right? So even though it's Sony, so all these things are all there, all fetched from Excel, okay? So let me just close it first. I'm not going to place anything yet, right? So that's the finished design. So what I can, uh, what it's supposed to look like. All right. Okay, so uh, okay, I, I can see that there are quite a lot of questions there. Okay, let me just spend some time here to look at the questions here. Okay, instead of a user, can we send to a group? Okay, let's say, um, okay, of course, because today an app can be sent right okay, directly to a group, only focus on a group of people, as well as expose it to Microsoft Teams. All right, if you have a team of people under Microsoft Teams, it can be done, okay? And what happens when the original creator leaves the organization? Okay, now most of the time, okay, the original creator when it leaves the organization, like I say, this one will be upon human discipline, whereby you need to perform handover, because the login command, okay, uh, or the owner of the app, right, okay, you can actually assign to another owner just before you leave, right? Or most of the time, okay, uh, the main administrator who can log into the Power Platform Admin Center, they can do something about it. So there are no worries about that. Okay, can we share this app to external parties? Now, um, you can share the app, of course, to another organization, different organization with Office 365, but I'm sure there will be some roadblocks because uh, if your app happens to connect to data sources that is only for your organization and you never expose it publicly, that app that you share to your external partner, different company will fail. All right, because when you launch the app, the app will say error connecting here, error connecting there. So it's all about how you expose the um, uh, data, right, to a public um, a part, okay, or to a public exposure. So that at least maybe let's say you upload to Azure, okay, or you upload, let's say, if you know that it's going to be public, let's say the data is from Excel, you may want to sort of like maybe publish to your OneDrive, 
right? And then that, that particular file that you publish to OneDrive, you immediately share to everyone, you know? So you make the link to that particular Excel as everyone. So that's just one example, yeah? Okay, so uh, Power App is no code platform, is similar to, okay, well, let, let, me, let me just run through all this demo first, okay, because we are already one hour in already, okay, so I still have one hour left, okay, to demonstrate what's left. Then I'm going to address again one by one all these particular questions. So my producers at the back, okay, please help uh, look at all these technical questions, right, and please publish it, right, so you guys just hang on to your seats. Uh, I will be starting to address one by one all these particular questions right at the end of my demo, yeah? All right, so bear with me, okay. So thank you very much. Uh, I know that uh, uh, the overwhelming response from everyone here, everybody would like to know about this and I'm sure, uh, frankly speaking, okay, I am not working for Microsoft, right? But I've been a pro Microsoft personnel for more than 20 years. So I know what's good. I know what to promote, okay? So what is not good, I will never say anything. But this thing is seriously good, right? I've trained a couple of organizations on that and they are loving it, okay? So, but anyway, now that's the app, right? So like I say, I have, I'm yet to actually go and, um, you know, order this app, you know, place some orders and all that. Now, I'm not sure whether I can do this, okay, to share on the phone, but uh, I haven't really run it on my phone, you know, but uh, let's see later where do I have time or not. Now, let me focus and go over to Power Automate right now, okay, because I told you all, uh, earlier, okay, when I go into this, okay, in the screen here, when I click submit device request and all those stuff, right, they will in the background uh, uh, run, okay, fire a workflow. So I'm going to talk about that right now. I'm going to close this. Okay. I'm going to close Power Apps right now. I'm going to go back to here and launch Power Automate. This is formerly known as Microsoft Flow. Okay. Now, let me explain a little bit about Power Automate. Now, Power Automate, right? Okay. When I first started with this, right? I, it has gone way far from last time and they have actually enhanced and matured a lot. Now, they have got hundreds of thousands of templates online that allows you to build easily a workflow. And if you have got no idea how you start, because most of the time, if you start to design a workflow from scratch, from blank, you always end up staring at the blank screen and say, ha, ah. and then you scratch your head, you know, and how should I start this? But if you are actually having a rough idea or you have a wireframe okay, of what you intend to do, you can search for from these hundreds and thousands of templates there. They might have somewhere down the alley where you need to follow. So you may be able to sort of like choose a template and start customizing from there. Okay, so it, it is not really a very, very bad experience where everything must start from a a blank okay so but in my case right okay i will start okay from a blank one okay so i need to create right okay from blank so i'm going to go to my flows here or rather i go to create here so you can see create an automated flow now there are quite a number of workflows here look at this there's automated flow an instant flow all right uh, a schedule flow and business process flow so now automated flow right is a workflow that is triggered based on time Okay, they are uh, tr tr not to say triggered based on time. Sorry, the schedule flow is triggered based on time. Okay, periodic. Automated flow is the one that we need because it's based on a trigger, right? Triggered by an event. Like for example, I give you an example back to my scenario here. Let's say one employee uses the app and let's say submit a device. He wants to order this device. His own laptop is very old already, five years old. It's time for him to make a purchase. So use the device ordering app, place a, 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 a submit, um, what I call submit a request, right? When you hit the submit button, now this line, this record, this particular submission, this request goes to where? Where, where does it go to? Now, so it goes, in my case, right, it goes into my common data service. It goes into the storage, my CDS. I can make this record right, okay, go into SharePoint. If you let's say, say, oh no, I know that about common data service. Yeah, I don't need you, Gerald Hong, to tell me about common data service. I already have done my research. I found it that no, common data service is too expensive, right? Because yes, it's, it is expensive. If you are on enterprise, right? You may have 
uh, a certain uh, amount of uh, CDS usage in there. But if you're not, okay, it is slightly expensive, okay, because it depends on your subscription plan as well, all right? But let's say I do not want to use CDS. What if I want this data, right, to be submitted to maybe a SharePoint list? Seems like a SharePoint is free, all right, and I want this record to be in there. Or maybe I directly want to insert this record and keep track of it using my Excel. Why not? Now, these are all, don't worry, it, it's, it's covered in my training, right? In my training, right, I supposedly I only focus on CDS, but I've created it to address all the common requests out there. People want to know all these records insert into Excel or SharePoint rather than CDS, or you want it to be in SQL Server database, no problem. It can be done, okay? So that is why now what I'm going to create, right, is an automated workflow. This workflow name, I'm just going to call it, let's say, um, device approval, uh, device order approval, all right? Something like that. Oh, sorry for my typing, device order approval. So look at this. They ask you, trigger by what? You see? Can you see this? Like, for example, this SharePoint, can you see that when the item is created? So when uh, when you click the submit button, okay, this record gets inserted, gets created in SharePoint. This will be the triggering point, right? It can be when a file is created, on your OneDrive for Business, you can see that there. You can see uh, be a feed, you know, RSS feed can be some of Microsoft Teams. When a record is updated, ah, this is what I want. This is the one that I want because my data goes into common data service when a record is created. Okay, so in this case, right, okay, for what I can do, right, okay, I can build an automated workflow by looking at this trigger. Okay, when a record is created. All right, so I'm just going to click on this and click create. So you can see there, it started with this. This is how it started. So I have to choose an environment. My environment is currently called webinar that I have. Okay, I've created a special environment for this webinar. The entity, now I'm gonna show you this entity later on when we come to the common data service because nobody here, right, okay, has ever seen the common data service yet. I mean, I'm talking about not you yourself, but within this webinar, you haven't seen anything yet, okay? So my entity, now what do you mean by entity? Okay, I'm going to pause here for a while since I told you guys I haven't shown you, right? Let me show you now. I go back to my Office 365. I launch back my Power Apps where my CDS is. You see, under data, I'm back to Power Apps, yeah? In my data, I expand it. You can see, there you go, entities. Now, you are now looking at all the entities. Entities means table. Remember this. In a data concept, right, the word entity, the term entity refers to something like a database table, all right? And like I say, there are so many entities. Now, you guys might be asking, did I create this? Obviously, no. I created this thing called device order. Let me show you this there. When I click device order, right, these are all the columns that I have. See, I create this on my own. Can you see fields? A field is like a column in the table. See, approval status, approved date, capital approved, approves our approver, the comments, when is it created, the device name, and whatever. Okay, I've created a lot of things here. Okay, now remember, this is actually a table that is whereby what you're looking at would be the columns. Now, what about the rules? Every entity, you can embed a business rule in there. Now, I have created a business rule called calculate ship date. Right now in the training, of course, okay, I, I'm going fast forward here because two hours, I've got not enough time to explain all the ITCBC details. The calculate ship date here means, right, okay, I have included a rule so that I'm supposed to have a column, right, to predict when is my shipping date. But I have actually a rule that says from the date created, the date of the request submission, right, I'm going to automatically plus maybe what, seven days or eight days, Right, that's when they populate. They use this business rule to automatically provision and provide a rule to certain number of columns. You guys get me? Okay. And of course, right at the end, data. So this data actually show that how many records do I have? So currently there are no records found. Later on, you see, right now I'm gonna stay here for a while. Later on, I'm gonna demonstrate when I hit okay, a new record, I submit, the record will appear here. When the record appear here, then this particular workflow of mine will start to fire. So right now, I'm going to quickly show you. I'm going to choose the entity. The entity is called device order. There you go, I've got a device orders, right? And the scope, of course, the scope is currently my own, okay? The whole organization scope, all right? Now, this is when by, when a record is created, 
okay what would you want to do next so i'm going to now click add new step because workflow design is to add step by step when this record is created what is the next step so when i click next step they ask you to choose an action so i'm going to start an approval i'm going to search for approval so i can see the approvals service so when i click approvals so you can see under approvals these are the available action either you create an approval okay or you start and wait for an approval right or you click wait for an approval so in my case here okay the approvals right okay so um i'm going to click on start and wait for an approval maybe i can see more i'm, I'm supposed to have another approvals there right okay that is version two because usually right okay i will need to have another one called v2 uh, i don't have the other approvals but anyway i think i can choose this one start and wait for approval so what is the approval type here all right what kind of approval because the approval type can be a few uh approve and reject where everyone must approve that means sometimes when you submission and start an approval right you may need a few people to approve it not just one so let's say you go, need to go through maybe um, your supervisor approve after a supervisor then your manager after a manager then maybe your vp let's say now if that's a case right okay you will need to say choose this one everyone must approve either one of them okay rejects that's it it will be rejected or you can choose this one wait okay the first to respond i'm going to choose first to respond the first to respond means right okay, even though no matter how many people that i have put in as the approver but the first person to respond to approve will make the call so it will be first to respond so once i choose the first to response right i can see that the, the title is going to be created here i can fill in all these things assigned to whom the details and all that so again like i say uh it's going to be very long for me to design this okay but thank god let me just go back i'm going to discuss this i will show you my new flow here called device approval request there you go this is the flow that i've created when we prepare for this and i'm going to click edit here there you go so this is whereby my record is created okay when i start approval as you can see there first to respond that the title for this report respond will be new device request for uh, i put in device name now where does all these things come from you see these are all placeholders so when i click in here right you can see there at this right at the side they can see something called dynamic content this dynamic content right here are connected to the data source that your flow is connected to right so for example you can see differentiated distinguishable by the icon this is cds icon yeah, look at that this is an icon for cds this is an icon for approval so you can see right okay there i want to grab the approval name here then i'll grab the device name from here then i can show other columns in my device like for example device name the price the department contribution the comments so i can create the details it's just like you type a message and then you concatenate with the content placeholder these are placeholder for your content coming in all right then after that you can see once this is done when start approval in the condition i add a condition to evaluate so when i expand the condition it says here i will wait for the condition the respond of the condition if it's equal to approve this is what i want to check for if the response equal to approve if yes i go through this path if it's no that means it's going to be reject i go to this path so if we look at this path here if yes i will update a record no also i'll update a record okay both also same thing i'll update a record then i send an email this is the same thing i'll update the record and i still send an email so let's watch this i go through the, yes if it's approved what record am i updating i'm updating the same device order record here as you can see and if i show the options right okay what am i updating these are all the columns in my device order right and you can see i've got comments i look at the comments from the approval and i can capture the approved date which is i use the utc now function then right somewhere here right uh what i am going to approve is to set the the approval status value is approved that's it comparing here next door okay this is the same thing but the approval status is reject can you see that so the rest is always reject so here reject no need comments here they never put a comment here but my approve i just capture the comment and later on at the bottom right both will also send an email now look at these two email left and right left hand side here if yes to requested by that means to the person who requested it this is subject your device order has been approved this side here your device was not approved right and then there's a congratulation kind of a email message here that's the body of the email 
And also this one is sorry, your request for this is not approved. All right, so there you go. This is just a very simple workflow okay, that you build okay, just to support what uh, I'll be getting soon. OK, so ultimately this is already published here. OK, so uh, I'm just going to close this right now. All right. So that is your the workflow. All right, that you have been built. Yeah, they'll be building here. All right. So um, yeah, I know that they'll have yeah, quite a lot of people actually uh, start sending a lot of uh, questions. So no worries. I'm nearing uh, the end, which uh, I'll show you one last thing about my Power BI. But before my Power BI right now, I want to show you also how the record goes in. OK. So I want you guys to check this out right now. OK, now I'm supposed to have a back office application also okay, waiting to process the order. <clears throat> now this back office product is called the model driven app, and this is related to Dynamics 365. Remember Power Platform, right? Okay, it's um, <clears throat> a suite of products that Microsoft already um, so-called positioned them under the Dynamics 365 suite. Okay, that is why even official curriculum by Microsoft Learning, for those of you who wanted to go for certification, there's a new certification for Dynamics 365 with Power Platform Core and all that, right? Uh, I think the training and the exam are okay, under the MB series, so you can see that Power Platform is already part of that. But they do not cover extensively on uh, the details of Power Apps as well as uh, auto Power Automate and even Power BI. So that is why I actually created this course okay end to end five days right here to let you guys from the end user perspective how you can start building an app that triggers a workflow and at the end of the day capture the data right in your storage and whereby you can build your report in power bi okay so it's end to end right even the the, the workshop is called an end to end discovery workshop so um, i'll briefly tell you about the details later so right now you can see that i am in my data storage my cds no data yet no records I want to show you, I want to point to you somewhere. Okay, let me open it in a new tab for all the apps that I have. Apart from my app right now, this is called the device ordering app. So let me open this one up. Okay, so I'm playing this app directly on my browser. You see, I'm playing it right now. At the same time, I want to show you I've got another one called device procurement app. This is the model driven app. Can you see this? Can you see that it goes into Dynamics 365? This is under Dynamics 365. Right, and you can see active device orders. So this app, right, is a website where the employee is going to be sitting in front of this app, waiting for the orders to come in. And when an order comes in here, start, you know, to process. Okay, what is the estimated ship date and whatnot? Okay, so this is also covered one of the chapter inside the, the course. I need to explain to you guys more. All right, only then. But here, I just want you guys to roughly understand the process. What you can, uh, what you will be able to see. So what you got to do right now, what I'm going to do right now is this. I'm going to stand by here right now, okay, of I myself, I'm going to make this uh, purchase. I'm going to uh, compare, let's say, Surface, this one, with a Dell, uh, Dell, uh, maybe this one, okay, probably, same play, all right? I just click compare two items, all right? Well, since this is 4 gig RAM, this is 2 gig RAM, okay, uh, I'm pro Microsoft, I'm going to buy a Surface right now, okay? So this 899.99, that's the price. I, I forgot it to put in a dollar or Malaysia ringgit or whatever. So comments here, I'm just going to put it, okay? My device is already old. Please help um, process this request, okay? Just a comment, right? So I'm going to click on submit a device request here. So I'm going to click submit device request. You can say your device request has been successfully submitted. Thank you. This is the device name, the comments, and you can see request date is like this. Okay, today's date, April the 17th. When I'm going to click OK, it's gone, done. Now, what happens is if I go back to my common data service. As you can see, this is the storage, right? When I click refresh data, can you see this one record there? It's already in. Active, see this is active. And if let's say I switch over to the processor, the person who is sitting in the back end, when I click refresh here, there you go. There's an active order coming in. All right, it came in already. Now, what about the email? Does the workflow already started firing in the background? So I'm going to launch my email. Let's say I'm going to use my web email, Outlook. All right, do I get anything? I'm not sure whether they are, <laughs> they're going to able, because sometimes uh, I remember that I've been testing this for past few days, right, to prepare for this webinar. 
uh, the email service, sorry to say, but it is very, very slow, right? Because of uh, the deprovisioning of uh, or the deprioritization of our service right now, it's getting very slow. So you can see that I don't get any emails so far, not yet. So I don't need to worry about this. Okay, later when it comes in, I'll hear a blink or a, or a, or a, or a tune. I'm going to show you that. Okay, so for now, as you can see, most importantly, the data is already in. Okay, cool. And this is actually my app, so I can close this app. And the employee right sitting in the background can start okay, looking at this. When I click this, they can see the details, who is the owner, who ordered, who's the approver, the timeline, whatever. So you can start actually playing around with this. Okay, But of course, um, in this particular webinar, I got no time to go focus in the steps or the delivery um, order, okay, the phase. Now, please take note that this back end uh, application that uh, the processor is going to sit here and process your request, right? Can you imagine, okay, now those of us, okay, we have been already in a lockdown for so long. You guys purchase something. In fact, I just recently purchased something online. I also buy a device online. It took me uh, a number of days before DHL come over to my place, deliver the device to me. Now, can you imagine, right, okay, once your order has been successfully submitted, okay, Usually, right, okay, you can see, you can trace, okay, uh, the order. You can track your order until the delivery date. So this tracking process, right, is also shown in this particular procurement uh, app, right? But it's just that I do not have the full accomplishment here in this app, right? Just to show you that the model-driven app guides the person who is working in the back office, right, what they need to do in order to help processing this order, right, as in setting the... Um, placing the order with the correct manufacturer and wait for the delivery, then go through the rest of the process before delivering the product to the employee's doorstep, okay? So ultimately, okay, it is all there already, okay? Now, until now, I still don't get my email yet, okay? So no worries on that. I remember that it's gonna be very slow, only for now, yeah? Due to this COVID-19 thing. So lastly, now, for what I want to do to talk about this is that the whole process is already there, Okay, but what I want to talk about lastly is the Power BI part. How can how does Power BI fit into this scenario? What in the world Power BI is going to work with? What kind of complementary um, feature does does Power BI offer in terms of Power Platform? You see, the motto of Power Platform is um, act, automate, and analyze. The triple A. Okay, so act is you use the app okay to capture the data. Automate is power automate, but analyze the analysis part. The analytics part is your Power BI. Okay. Now, in order for my Power BI report to work, right, I cannot survive by looking at this only one single, <laughs> one single data here. Correct or not? So let me just create another one. Maybe create another record. Okay. Simply just uh, show you. Okay, this Asus. Uh, I want to buy this Vivo tab. Compare this with a Toshiba. See, people, people still buy Toshiba. I don't know. Just compare these two guys. You know, uh, I'm gonna, maybe I'm going to go for a port or a portage here. Uh, this one, uh, another request, something like that. I just click on submit your device request, and yep, everything is uh, submitted successfully. Okay, and if I close this right now, I go back to my data here. I just refresh this data. You can see that record number two, definitely Toshiba Portage, right? There you go. We went in, all right? And in fact, even my procurement, the back office guy who's sitting there to try to process my order also can see the second order came in. You see that? So it is really working, okay? Now, in order for my Power BI to be able to work, all right? I am going to insert some historical data. I've got thousands of rows. I just simply go and mass import into my this one, this particular common data service, all right? So then I can conclude this whole demonstration, then I can start going to talk about and addressing all the Q&As. I'm sure hundreds of people out in this webinar session, I will have lots of queries, so no, no worry. At the first place, I was thinking of uh, assigning 15 minutes to answer Q&A, but I think I'll need to allocate more time, yeah? So I'm just gonna go through this whole sneak peek here. So what I'm gonna do now, okay? I'm gonna do this get data from Excel, as you can see, I can import data from Excel. I've got a big bunch of records. Let me show you right now. I've got these historical device orders. I'm gonna open up in my Excel to show you. This is what it looks like, as you can see, huge amounts of them, all right? All right, so I'm gonna import this, okay? I think it's gonna be 1,200 plus rows. So um, uh, 
I'm, I cannot remember the exact number, okay? But I'm just going to show you how I'm going to import mass importation here. So as you can see, I'm going to do a file upload, okay? Here, I'm going to click in there, right? I'm just going to go to my webinar folder where I can see historical device orders. I open up, okay? And they're uploading right now. So just give me a while. While waiting, let me just check out some of the questions there. Um, Okay, I, well, is there an approval delegation? Is there an approval delegation option? Yes, of definitely. All right, so there'll be uh, quite a number of approval delegation options for you, for you because the approval is only based on what you assign. Okay, it, there's no um, fixed uh, group of people that uh, approvers must be in in order to uh, do the approval. Okay. Right, so uh, uh, I'm going to wait for the rest of the question to come in as well. No worries. OK, let me just quickly come back to here. There you go. Mm, I already um, uploaded it, but uh, this is due to uh, my expectation. I really expected the same mapping errors exist because they need to map the columns in my Excel with the columns I have in my table. So I need to go to map fields here. I'm going to start mapping here. OK, you guys just got to give me a while to start mapping this 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 whole thing here. Right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so right now, okay, so the mapping fields here, right? I'll need to start doing this. Okay, the first thing is I want to choose the approval status value. I'm going to choose approval status. There you go. Approval status is approval status, yeah? Approved date will be approval date. Approval date. There you go. Approved date. Mm -hmm. And approval. It's going to be approver, match like that. See, approver to approver. All right, then the rest I think is okay. Only I think comments, uh, comments is already comments. The device name, uh, there you go. Those with asterisks means these are all uh, required field. Device name is not set. That's an error here. So device name is pointing to device name as well. There you go. Device name is device name. And next one should be price to price. The price is also not set. As you can see, price is mapped to price column. And uh, process ID. Now I need to make sure that process ID, right? I cannot set it. No, this process ID is auto generated by CDS. Yeah, it's an um, a unique identifier. Okay, so they are auto generate. Request date will be request date. Uh, you can see here requested by will be mapped to requested by. Simple as that. Okay, I think I'm, I'm, I'm good enough. Okay, no more errors. So then I'm just going to go through save changes right at the top here. There you go. What mapping warnings exist? Only warnings. I'm good with it. Okay, no errors. Just now was error. Now warning. So warning is okay. okay. It's ignorable. So immediately I can click the button one more time. Import. So now they got to import. If it's successful, I will be able to see they will say thousand plus rows imported and all that. So I believe it's going to be one thousand plus. I've forgotten the exact number. I think it's one thousand two hundred plus. Just wait for that. This is okay. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, right? Okay, just for you, those of you who do not, uh, maybe you missed out. What am I doing here? Uh, because I cannot be possibly going to generate a few requests. You now, so I've got thousands of rows. I need enough data so that my Power BI report works. You see, because that not enough data, my Power BI doesn't. There's nothing. It's so lonely. I cannot show you anything, right? So I need some historic uh, historical data, which I import directly into my common data service my cds here then in my power bi i'm going to build a report that connects to common data service i'm sure a lot of you guys here right who have done power bi before i'm sure that you maybe you have gone through some training uh most of the time uh people will show you your trainer will show you connecting to sql and connecting to this this is actually too simple because sql is microsoft power bi is microsoft microsoft to microsoft well it's simple now, even common data service is Microsoft, but nobody's ever demonstrated how do you connect to common data service, right? So there you go. Back to my thing. Uh, yeah, see, I remember vividly 1,245 rows imported. So now I'm going to close this. Okay, once I go back to my entities again, I need to go into my device order again. And when I click on data, there you go. I'm looking at, see, ooh, a lot of data now. Okay, load more. Yep. I've got lots of data here. Load more. Mm. All the data is in. Okay, so some reject, some approve, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's time for me to now show you Power BI portion. Okay, now, as I'm also a Power BI trainer, okay, I actually started Power BI training many years ago, okay, since the infancy, right? So I'm actually very, very um, 
uh, skillful in, in Power BI. I can almost answer almost a lot of things in Power BI. So let me just uh, be the gung-ho person here to launch my Power BI desktop. Okay. Power BI desktop, I've already installed it. Okay, this is the only um, part that you need to install on your laptop. To do Power Apps and all that, you don't need to install anything. Power BI, uh, yep, there is an offline application that you need to download and install on your laptop. It's free of charge, okay? So there you go, I've got this Power BI desktop already here, okay? In my case, okay, let me just tell you, mine is the latest version because mine gets updated a lot, okay? Uh, the latest version is of March 2020, yeah? So due to the COVID-19 thingy, I'm not actually expecting April update anytime soon yet. I'm not sure whether they're releasing, but there was actually one month where they have skipped, I think they've skipped January or February update, right? So the latest update is March 2020, okay? Anyway, so now in my Power BI right now, I'm not, not going to waste time here. So I'm just going to go to home where I'm going to click get data here. So I just want to point you guys to this. When I get data, right, I'm going to click more. Okay, those of you who have attended Power BI, maybe from my side or maybe from other trainers or maybe from other um, places, I'm sure you may not have actually witnessed this yet, but there is a new Power Platform. Okay, as you can see, this was not there since even last year it's only launched i think somewhere in january where they have actually produced power platform here you can see you can connect to power bi data sets as well as data flows and this is what i want the common data service okay so if your table right okay if your data that you um, fit in was from sharepoint then you can choose let's say here you go to uh, your other here right you can see uh, there's maybe from all so you can actually click on all here you can see there's a sharepoint uh, SharePoint online, maybe just do a search here. Let's not wait. SharePoint online list. See, it's there, All right? So, but anyway, in my case, Ricky, uh, I want it to be definitely uh, the uh, Power Platform and Common Data Service. I click connect. So now, this is the part that you need to pay attention. The server URL, because Power Platform, right? Okay, the um, Common Data Service, right? In order for you to be able to use power uh, this uh, CDS common data service, right? You need to copy okay the uh, environment to your Dynamics 365 because this power platform is connected to Dynamics 365. So let me show you what I mean here right now. Okay, I go back to this here. Okay, you look at my environment here. Okay, so what I need to do right? Okay, first thing first is to open up my power platforms admin center here. I go to the admin center. And I look at my environment. My environment name I just created, right? Okay, a couple of days ago called webinar. So when I click this webinar here, right, they bring me to the environment, as you can see, right? I'll just need to open the environment. Okay. So this is the environment representing my uh, webinar. So you can see my device procurement app is here. Can you see that? My even, uh, yeah, okay, some of the apps are there. And of course, most importantly, this is the server URL. So I'm going to copy from here all the way with the crm5.dynamics.com until here, all right, until the slash. The main.espx, whatever, I don't need to. So I'm just gonna give a copy of this URL, right? That's all I need to, all right? Then I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna paste it here, there you go, okay? And right after that, right, okay, where I need to connect and also display, add some display column, yeah, I'll just put it through. This is optional anyway, I don't need to put in actually. So just click on okay. So it's going to connect to my own webinar environment where my entire CDS, my database, my, my data service is all found there. And as you can see, it's connecting already. Okay, and you can see entities. Can you see the entities that I have? So in the entities, right, okay, there are quite a lot. You see so many of them. So you can definitely see, okay, my entity called device order. So usually, right, okay, they will append the device order at the back in which in front there's a prefix of some unique ID. This prefix of a unique ID is different from one environment to another. So in my case, I got a CR6BD, something like that. So I'm gonna choose this particular device order. I also want to choose, right, get a system user, all right? I will have a system user somewhere here. Let me look for system user, there you go. System users to check the user. All right, so this is my system user. Some the sample preview is there. So my device order, right? Okay, as you can see when you click here, see these are all the data that I've loaded, thousand plus there. And also I'm going to look into my device procurement processes. I want to look at the uh, procure. This is the table as well. I just want to select some of these table in there, right? And I'm going to click on transform data to go into my Power Query editor, okay, to start massaging my data and stuff like that. 
okay? So there you go. So I've got this particular device order. As you can see, a lot of data here. So I need to do a lot of all this cleanup and whatnot, okay? So, okay, fine, enough. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to close this. I'm going to show you what I've done so far, okay? I'm going to go, let's try this. Okay, let me show you what I have done. Of course, I've got not enough time to go through the details. Power BI itself is one day itself, just, just to learn how it will connect to common data service, perform the cleanup, transform the data, and stuff like that, okay? Okay, so, okay, I'm just gonna go into my data view. There you go. These are all my five tables I actually uh, connected to two more tables in the case in manufacturers and, and, and devices. This is from my Excel as well. So these are the date that the, the thing that I've actually cleaned up. And if I were to go back to my uh, Power Query editor, I'm going to show you how it looks like in my Power Query editor, all the steps I've actually cleaned it up. Device order. There you go. I rename columns, remove some columns. I change this and that I replace something. And you can see that I've got two nulls here. There you go. Can you see these are the two records that I've actually submitted earlier? Surface Pro and the Toshiba Portage. Can you see that? Uh-huh. There, approved date. Nothing. I haven't got any approval yet. Speaking of which, I'm not sure whether I've got the email already or not. Uh, no, <laughs> no email yet. Okay, so it's going to be quite slow here. All right, but anyway, back to this data here. That is why okay, I haven't approved yet. Can you see it's null? No reject, no approve. Okay, and approved date also do not know when is it, but I've got the rest of the data at the bottom, as you can see. So everything is all done here. Okay, so uh, this two, right? Okay, maybe I can just simulate that. Approved date here, right? Okay, maybe the, this two now, maybe I can just avoid this two, but uh, anyway, uh, let's not worry about this. Maybe the, approve, uh, the approval status, I just want to replace them immediately. So I'm just going to replace the value of null here, right, with approved as well. Okay. So I'm just going to click on OK. So I've got approved this big bunch of reject here, right? There's a lot of reject here, and I got approved. Oh yeah, approve is just approved without D. All right, I'm so sorry. Let me go back here and just minus off the D. It's not past tense, yeah? So just click on OK, so we can see the proof already. OK, so I've got a data somewhere around here, all done, OK? So this is what I have, and uh, my devices, this one, you cannot find a path to my device order data here. Uh, I think my path has already changed, probably. Let me just go to my devices here. Let me go to my source. Let me edit. I just browse to my webinar here. And there you go. This is the device order uh, data. Okay. Okay. And the data came back. All right. Mm -hmm. The manufacturer is also the same thing because I've changed the location, probably. So I need to update the location again, device order data, open, and the data will be back to normal. There you go. Okay, so everything is in good shape. I'm going to close and apply. Okay, so, yep, they're going to refresh the data that I have directly there. Okay, so now I can start right here looking at even the relationship. You see, the relationship, they automatically understood, okay, how the manufacturers want too many connected to the devices with the device order one too many here, right? So one device order can have, uh, so one device can have many orders. One manufacturer can have many devices, as you can see, and one user can have many orders and also a procurement is one to one. As you can see one here and one here. So it's one to one, one to many, right? The relationship is all out there and I can immediately move back to here to create my report, okay? So what kind of report can I build directly from here? Okay, so I'm just going to show you, okay, roughly how I start okay, designing this particular report. So the first thing, let me just scan what I need to do here. Yeah? So probably the first thing I need to do, okay, is to add, okay. Oh yeah, I think I've actually created, okay, something like this whereby I have created a, a table. Maybe the first thing I want to do, okay, is to create a table, right? So I'm going to add, let's say, this a table from the approvers uh, from the device order table here. I'm going to check okay the approver as you can see when I click approver. So okay the table come out. These are all the approvers name. All right. Then uh, including myself, you can see my email is dress, uh, is in there. All right. Then I'm also going to add the approval status. Approval status is here. Approve or reject. Approve or reject. All that. 
I'm going to add the price as well. I'm going to add the device name. There you go. I'm just going to check. Yeah, so this table is getting larger and larger, right? And I'm going to add also the link here. Yeah? So I've created a link here. As you can see, let me show you yeah, this, this, this column. I need to go back to my table. I want to show you this link column that I've added, actually added. When I go to the link column, see this, this column right here is called link. See, this link right here, I practically create a formula whereby I just say equals to, can you see that this is actually the uh, location, okay? Connecting to then the device order fetching. So this is actually just to create a link, right? To fetch the exact order and connecting to the order ID, all right? So ultimately, when I show inside here, right? I grab the link like this, right? Let me check the link. The link column, so sorry, it's inside here. I add the link column at the side. The column will be shown like this, you see, which is ultimately crazy. I do not want the link to be so wide here. So what I can do, I select the link column here, okay? And I'm going to format it, right, okay, whereby the values, okay, the, the, the link there, okay, I'm going to actually choose to show as a URL icon. So uh, in the values here, right, I can see URL icon off. I just turn it on. It becomes only an icon like this, you see? So it would be easier so that when I actually click on the link, right, you see, when I click, they bring me to the actual order, you can see. They bring me to the page where I'm looking at this order, Acer S5V5. The approval is Emmanuel Shepardane or whatever, you know. So they are able to actually click the link and, and bring you directly to the particular details of that, right? So there you go, that's actually one, all right? And I also created one more calculated column, a column okay, for me to do a calculation, which is called approval time. There you go, there's another calculated column here. This calculated column, right, let me just show you here in the formula bar. You see that? It's called calculate approval time in days where I use a date diff function to check okay, the difference between the request date column with the approved date in days, right? So do I do have this particular um, approved time in days. So what I'm going to do is I will create a clustered bar chart, okay? Uh, a clustered bar chart will be like this. When I click on the clustered bar chart, I'm just going to add, let's say, okay, the uh, approver. I'm going to check the approval, who's the approver here, and also the uh, so-called approval time, just now that one to be the value. There you go. So it's going to look like this, okay? All right. So as you can see, this is the, actually the, the chart that I have. So when I point to it, you can see that uh, patients, Patman, the approval time in days is 654 days. But like I say, this approval time in days, okay, I will need to drop it down first. I'm going to check it out based on the order, okay? I, uh, the tooltip. I've got a tooltip here, right? I'm going to add the device order as well. Okay, drag and drop it into the tooltip so that when I hover my mouse, they will show me there the first order and how much is that. So I'm not going to actually show the first only order, but I want to click the drop down here to choose count. How many orders that the same particular approver has approved it? So like, for example, this guy, right? The count or device order, 114 orders that this person has actually approved. And total days, okay, is 653 days, as you can see there, all right? And of course, the approval days, okay, I do not want to actually do a sum. There's no point summing up the days. I want to check out what is the average approval days. So I'm going to click this drop down here and also not do a sum, but average. There you go. So now it's going to be a bit more wide, um, a bit more meaningful. So like, for example, Joanna Hoos, Right, she approved 135 uh, devices, all the orders, and it took her an average of 5.63 days to approve. Right, so that's something like that. Okay, now in this case, I rather do show you. This is page one, right? Let me just delete off this page. I want to show you my actual completed page. There you go. I have it in the background. This is my completed page, which I've done as a homework before I start this webinar. Right, so it looks something like this. I've got a total device ordered, how much there? 1,247. Remember, I've imported one, two, four, five, right? And then I've got two extra, which I placed the order myself, right? Which was the, the Surface and then the Toshiba laptop. So two plus 1,245 gives me one, two, four, seven. Okay, and you can see that I've got approval status. This color is approved. How many percent are rejected? These are by the, the, uh, the title. Of which is actually the manufacturer, 100% market share. This is by the device there. 
count a device ordered by the memory. I can see people majority um, ordered those devices with four gig RAM. Second is eight gig DDR3 RAM. So if I click this guy, they're going to highlight to me, right? So when I click select this, then a different percentage, right? So those with which is actually four gig RAM when I select this, total of 599 orders uh, already ordered. Okay, amount of proof is how much. And actually I can filter for those rejected. So if I want to focus on rejected, I select this, they're going to filter that. This one, of course, is all rejected, right? So it's all 100%. These are the people who rejected it, all right? And uh, the price which I rejected is 7,000 plus here. And these are the number of days which I have rejected. And these are all the records that have been rejected, okay? So roughly there. And of course, if you choose approve, then these are all the approved values, okay? So if let's say I do not choose anything, then it will be a comparison between approved and rejected. So making to say like, for example, ACES, if I click on ACES, there you go. These are all details about all the devices, who are the approvers for ACES, amount approved is $100,000 worth of ACES products. These are the breakdown by the memory of the devices. Okay, so this is actually my Power BI report, which I have already published, right? And I'm gonna show you now. I'm gonna to go to my Power BI website, the portal. I'm gonna launch my Power BI. I'm Power BI Pro. Definitely, and if I go to my workspace, which I've already, um, uh, uh, there you go. So you can see that in my workspace, I will now click on device order report, and I'm looking at it on my web browser. So there you go. This is page one, but I go to page completed. This is it, and I can view it, let's say, in a full screen view. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be my entire uh, report. Okay. So all these data come from my CDS, whatever data that I've imported, right, okay? So I can actually create an analysis here, okay? So no problem with that, okay? So ultimately, what you have seen, okay, I know it's very quick, okay? So even though you can see that I did not even do a full demo and it is already four o'clock, <laughs> all right? So that is why I've already pro uh, projected this. So that's why I've created parts and parts of all these completed ones, which I show you how I started with this and then how is the end result because the entire course okay, to learn everything from zero until hero, it is five days. And in fact, I did not even show you right how my data is okay, from, coming from if I want to store it in SharePoint or even in Excel, so which is also covered in that particular uh, course, okay? All right, so there you go. Now, guys, it's time for me to do a, a half an hour um, Q&A here right now. So let me just run through all these published questions right now. So I've actually seen there are 14 questions which have been published. Uh, I think you guys can see that already. So let me just run through one by one right from the beginning. All right. So uh, you guys are free to keep on uh, asking questions here. Right. I'll be detailing also uh, questions about uh, if you are interested in learning this full five day course, right? Now you guys can direct the question as well, which uh, my producers in the background, they are all representing um, uh, InfoTrack. Okay, maybe some of you guys were invited by them as well. So they are more than happy to, um, you know, to actually answer your questions, all right? And of course, uh, which whereby we are need to looking, we're gonna look at okay, the technical part of it. I'm gonna handle the technical questions. So, okay, the first one okay, is that my company already have Office 365. Is common data service available? Okay, now, in order for you guys to look at uh, whether your uh, Office 365 has common data service or not, now, I need to redirect you guys right, okay, to your particular Power Apps uh, availability because it all depends on your Power Apps. Common data service, right, okay, uh, I think I need to show you Again, okay, let me let me just bring you to this thing here, okay? Let's say, I'm just gonna go for Power Apps pricing. Okay. Now check this out, all right? So there, as you can see, uh, because of COVID-19 uh, responses, whatever, right? Okay, get Microsoft Power Platform solution free of charge for six months. Now they have got this, but actually if you look at it here, there, I'm going to switch it over to Malaysian Ringgit, uh, but I guess we do have international uh, participants as well. I was told that uh, we've got uh, what, crowds from, from Cambodia or, or even India probably, uh, okay? Uh, anyway, I'm just going to remain showing in US dollar. So you can see Power Apps here, right? Okay, there are two different scenarios here, okay? Whether we are talking about per app or uh, per user, okay? Now, the per app plan, right, okay, is called running single app. 
which cost you $10 per user per app per month. This is actually quite expensive. This is for an individual user. Now, let's say, for example, you have developed one app and you got 10 users who want to use this app. So you got to pay $100 per month okay, to con for these 10 users to continuously run one app. But on the other hand, if let's say you are going to have a lot of applications and uh, you want different users to be able to run all these applications. So in this case, you are going to look at per user, but unlimited apps. This is 40, four times payment compared to this. So it's $40 per month, US dollar per month per user. So for the same 10 uh, users, you need to pay 400 US dollar per month, all right? For these 10 users to be able to run unlimited apps. Now, please take note, yeah? This pricing is only for the Power Apps part, okay? And because when you buy either one of these, right, okay, now look at this. There, use common data service. So when you pay for either of this pricing, okay, common data service is already available. Please take note, right? It's just that the different parts of the capacity for a per app plan, right? This is very limited, 50 megabytes of database capacity and the file capacity is 400 megabytes. So you can upload files and storages, right? So only for this per app, right? Now for a per user plan, every user has been given 250 <clears throat> megabytes of database capacity with a file plan of two gigabytes. This is actually per user for every month <clears throat> for them to use unlimited apps. But the <clears throat> app plan itself, okay, it's actually unlimited. <clears throat> As you can see here, app plan is unlimited. So common data service is already included in all Power Apps. It's just a matter of whether have you actually got license on which of the Power Apps plan to be able to use the CDS. In fact, I don't mind to show you in my plan. My plan comes from the old classic days whereby when I click here, I can see plans. If I click on my plan, right, you can see I'm using the Power Apps per user plan. I'm supposed to have a per app. I think it's, it's it's wrong here. Okay, so I'm supposed to have one thing called the per apps per user as well as per app plan. My per user plan means unlimited, as you can see, and I have rights to use CDS without any problems. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> next one. Okay. So my, okay, hang on. I, I've actually shown this uh, screen for, for now, okay. Next one, the question. Uh, I'm looking on um, building HR dashboard, okay, or platform. Is it possible to do with Microsoft Power Platform? Okay. Uh, to build a HR dashboard, we are look, looking at actually Power BI part, right? Okay, um, because Power Platform is comprised of three different uh, uh, products, three different technologies. So Power Apps is actually for you to build an app, right, which is going to be used by all your frontliners, all your employees to start using the app to, to enter data, you know, where it's used to capture the data. So the data is going to be stored in the back end. And then your Power Automate is the workflow to regulate your business processes. So if you talk about dashboard, right, that's, I foresee that's going to be part of the <clears throat> reporting. So Power BI is more than good, okay, in order for you to, to have that. But if you're talking about having an HR platform, that means maybe you want to focus like an HR MIS, you know, where you have a, um, a maybe for leaf application, that's one app, maybe for claims reimbursement, you have another app. You know, you can have multiple, multiple types of apps that you can build under HR. All this data can be stored in SharePoint, uh, even in your traditional Excel, and Power BI can be used as a report, okay? How do you see the app complement the Salesforce software? Okay, I've got another question here to talk about how do you see uh, the app complementing the Salesforce software? Now, I'm not really uh, an expert in Salesforce, okay? I have actually done before only Power BI uh, connecting to data from Salesforce, okay? Just to generate a report, okay? I'm not sure how viable or how effective the, the Salesforce is, but you can say that Power Platform is the equivalent of all these uh, competitors, this third party like Salesforce, uh, SAS, uh, Pyramid, Informatica, you know, whatever. You know, th these are all competitors to Microsoft. So Microsoft's under the umbrella of Dynamics 365. This is the answer to the fight between the battle between all this. All right. So if your technologies are more catered towards, let's say, the Power, uh, I mean, Microsoft, right? Okay, then Power Platform will be 
equivalent to what you you may have in Salesforce. So I'm not an avid user in Salesforce. I've actually seen the Salesforce objects and reports from a Power BI perspective when I connected to Salesforce. Okay. So anyway, um, Salesforce already bought over uh, Tableau. So in terms of reporting, right? Okay, Tableau will reinforce Salesforce. That's what I can foresee. But uh, from uh, being a Microsoft uh, perspective, uh, uh, I will see that this is actually a threat <laughs> to Power Platform. But uh, Microsoft is in no uh, worry at all. Okay. So yep, that's uh, the answer to that. Next one, does Office 365 Pro Plus include the Microsoft Power? Um, okay. As far as what I, I haven't followed Microsoft uh, uh, Professional Plus because I remember that uh, Office 365 is going away soon. Uh, Office 365 is going to be generalized into Microsoft 365. They've got uh, the all Office 365 business essential, business premium for the business. They're going to have different names for that. So the licensing part is uh, seriously, <laughs> I cannot really remember all that, but let me just talk about, um, let me show you what we have right now under Office 365 uh comparison okay um let me just show uh because these are all information from uh official microsoft curriculum as you can see pro plus as you can see you only get all these services okay remember that okay so uh the power apps and whatever okay you don't get it naturally if you're using uh, pro plus typically you will need to uh get uh, power apps by paying for the subscription separately like remember the ten dollars per user compared to forty dollars and all that okay so only when you go into the enterprise okay you will get all the rest of the applications uh you may want to read more about it here uh, i believe that pro plus you may have certain amount of services on there but you are not going to be able to work on the, the entire power apps and and power automate as it is supposed to be all right so yeah that's uh Pro Plus is actually considered very, very uh, minimum. Okay. So the next thing would be um, this. Uh, okay, Microsoft Power App is a no code platform. Yes. Or is this similar to almost no code platform? Still requires a little bit of coding, like Joe get. Okay. Or now, all right. This question, right, is a very good question. Uh, let me reinforce again. Power Apps, right? As you can see, there are no coding at all. Let me just demonstrate something again, since you guys have been asking for that. Um, let me go back to my Power Apps, right? Let me show you my Canvas app just now, yeah? You guys can still see my screen. Let me go back to my Canvas app with there. Let me go in triple dot here, my device ordering app and edit. Let me show you what is in the background when I click this and click that, right? So my device ordering app, the only code that you see would be formulas, that's it. There are no programming knowledge required. Have, okay, if you tell me that you are an avid Excel, person you have been working with excel uh, yeah i have actually seen formulas you are on your way to learn power apps without any serious problem look at this yeah when i select this button look at that it's like this navigate to which screen none see so when i select this one okay there it's just compare so in the event for that right okay what is the event this is actually for text so if you go to action yeah what about this you see under action Clicking this right here, you can see on check. What is the action? So when I click on check, there is to collect and put this item into an array, right? For example, even this button also same thing. See, it's to navigate, right? And what about this one? This whole items here. So if I go to on select, there's no action for this on select, of course, okay? But uh, there is actually a way for you to input formulas. Even like for example, let me go to another screen. Let's say even the device gallery here. Uh, maybe this compare screen. In a compare screen right here, you can see there's a gallery waiting for data to come in here. And uh, in this case, even this button submit, as you can see there, it's just called submit form, form one, all right? And if you want more, okay, when you click the button, you want more um, type of actions, much more specific, much more enterprise thing, all right? And, and more complex type of actions. You can even fire Power Automate from here, as you can see. Clicking the button immediately invoke a Power Automate flow. It can be that, you see, there are no programming. Everything is centered across this FX, this formula bar. And you know how wide the formula bar can be. It's it's very simple, all right? So that's the answer to it, okay? Next one, if we have multiple apps in Power App Portal, is there any way to organize them, like in a folder? Mm, okay, for this question here, if I were to go back to my Power Apps screen here, as you can see, all right? 
So all my apps okay, are all in this in this manner. OK, they, they, there is no way for it to actually sort of like organize it yet, but I remember right okay, you can create some sort of like a view. See all this right okay, is either by org apps, organization apps or my apps because by default it's under my apps. OK, apps that you build. But if there are apps under organization, there are only two views there. So there is no way for it to build a folder and to store apps into different folders and all that. Not yet. I wouldn't say cannot because today the platform for cloud, right? It's very dangerous for a trainer like me to be so, um, you know, so concrete and telling you, oh, no, I cannot say that because cloud are ever changing and, and due to the recent um, uh, spike, okay, the 1000 more than 1000 percent increment in all the online services for Microsoft, their business is booming and a lot of users. I can tell you, you can imagine that a lot of users have voiced out their so called feedback and the Microsoft is actually straining every single one of them in Redmond and in India. They are actually toiling their bones to satisfy all requests and they're actually rolling out changes as we speak now. So I cannot tell you that it is a no no. All I can tell you right here that it is not yet available. Like for example, Microsoft Teams also they are being a, high, uh, a huge priority right now to enhance team, right? So yeah, with, with Zoom already out of the picture, uh, not as a truly new competitor because of the security flaw and all that, Microsoft actually really needs to um, bump up okay, or buff up their, their, their apps, okay? Next one is, uh, is a prover name input by the back office people or the one who is requesting for the device, okay? The approval name, right, okay, from based on what you have seen in my demo just now, right, okay, ah, that was I key in myself, okay. But actually, the approval name, right, okay, depending on how you design your Power Apps, I can make the uh, text box of approval name uh, read only. The moment I go and select, okay, uh, this is the uh, device that I want it to be, the approval text box will automatically check in the Office 365 profile. This user currently report to whom? Who is his immediate superior? And then grab the name and display directly in the approval. No need to type. But in my case just now, I manually type myself. You understand me? Okay, so everything can be done. It can be, you know, it's able to call a function, read the Office 365 um, um, particular, um, uh, profile, all right, and read who's the, the, the immediate superior, and then immediately you can actually populate the text box. No need to type, okay? All right, next one. Power Apps, yeah? Uh, in your demo on device ordering app, we had to key in email for the approval. Can we have a drop down which lets, uh, oh yeah, correct. Oh yeah, back to also the same thing, yeah? Um, Active Directory, yeah, okay. Now you see in my particular demo just now, let me just go back to my demo. You guys can still see my screen. Yeah, I cannot remember whether I key in or whatnot. Let me just go and click play again. Mm, I remember that the text box can be a people picker when you type in a few characters and then they are able to uh, show all the users in your organization. So let me just select this one, I click compare, go to the next screen. Can you see this? Okay, it's already automatic populated because according to my own uh, demo here, okay, I just pre-populate this to be myself, okay? So you see, if I were to erase this, okay, it's just a normal text box. So I click on it, I type the name, see, there's nothing here. So the text box, okay, is not loading, okay, like a people picker. You type a few characters, they're able to filter through your entire organization what uh, the available users that starts with the name, let's say G-E-R, Ger, you know, maybe it's Gerald or, or Germaine or, or General, whatever, okay? So in my case, it's just a text box, okay? So as you can see, if I go back, if I were to clear the selection, I start all over again. If I select another one, when I compare, you see? So this screen, right, okay, doesn't remember because I've erased it, but just now you guys remember that once I move into the screen, they automatically select myself to be there because I do it that way, okay? So it can be done, right? It can be done, no problem for you to read uh, or maybe create a people picker, okay? Next one, what is the difference between Power Platform with other web solution tools in terms of user group capacity? Okay, um, this is a very wide question here. Um, difference between Power Platform with other web solution tools. Um, okay, um, I do not know um, how this question is going to be formulated, but 
I presume okay, that uh, you are actually interested to understand um, in terms of total number of users that can be using this Power Platform compared to other solution tools. Right? Now, Power Platform is already part of uh, Dynamics 365, all right? They are not, they're, they're provisioned directly through Office 365. Now, Office 365 and Dynamics 365, these two sub platforms are in the process of being consolidated into Microsoft 365 as a gen general. Right, so um, this power platform is already going to be uh, uh, tuned under the Dynamics 365 licensing or subscription platform. So I do believe that in terms of user support and capacity, it is actually huge. It can be in thousands and thousands. All right. So if you compare this with other web solutions and, and, and the rest of the tools, if you are talking about other third party, I'm not really sure, right? But uh, within the uh, ecosystem of Microsoft, this is ultimately what Microsoft is actually produ uh, uh, promoting, right? And uh, based on the endless cloud possibility, Microsoft is not going to throw their money into any areas. This is the platform to be. And this is where your money is going to be. This is where what Microsoft is investing. This is where Microsoft's money is as well, all right? So yeah, I, I would say that that's what I can answer you, okay? For the next question, for Power Automate, which is the flow, formerly known as flow, when you create the flow to be used in Power App, you are the owner. How do we allow other colleagues to use the same flow as well? Okay, very good question here. The question talking about the flow, yeah? So let me just go to my flow right now. Um, I'm gonna close all these things which are not needed. You can see that my stupid email hasn't arrived <laughs> for, some, for some time already. No worries on that. I'm going to go to my Power Automate. Now you guys would realize okay, that uh, whatever I created right, okay, is called under my flows, right? You can see there's something called team flows as well. Okay, a team flow right, okay, is where you can create a new flow and you can store it into a team flow, which you assign all your members within a team will be able to use the workflow. They are also able to be granted okay, with rights. Who is the owner and who is the editor and stuff like that. OK, it's also uh, the more important for you to be able to import. So maybe you have created a flow under my flows here, right? You can actually go and click here and to export it out. But in a much similar fashion, easier way, you can see share already. Can you see that the flow is shared? When you click share a flow, then you can add who will be the owner. This is, I think, much more direct to the question that I read from there just now. I think this is the easiest. No need to talk about export, no need to talk about team flows, but it's easy for you to add another person as another owner here. And these are the connections embedded inside which I use inside my flow. It's easy, okay? It's just the right share, okay? Okay, next one. What is a model-driven app and is it easy to use? Okay, um, this question, it's very subjective, but I would say that uh, model driven app is not really that easy to understand. Usage is easy. Now, how easy it is, right, depends on whether you, uh, how you build the app, okay, how your entire business process flow is. If your business process has many, many steps to get to accomplish from the time when people submit this data all the way until the end when it's considered finished, then your screens for the model driven app will be a lot. OK, so ultimately um, this so-called model driven app, uh, it is not easy to design and plan out. OK, but usage, it's very easy, straightforward because it looks, it guides the user okay, on what is step one. After this is done, what is the next step two? And then what is the next step three? So these steps are all pre-designed in your model driven app. OK, it uh, is up to you. OK. OK, next one. Can you please explain how flow link with Power Automate? Okay, uh, I think the question is, Flow is Power Automate, yeah? Power Automate is the new name for Microsoft Flow, all right? So Flow is just uh, the word workflow. So last time or all this while, we call it workflow. So Microsoft no longer call it workflow anymore, but it's still a workflow, yeah? All right, the word work, W-O-R-K has been dropped, just left the word flow. And they have renamed Microsoft Flow as Power Automate. So Power Automate is Flow. Flow is Power Automate, okay? Next one, uh, what is the time zone in Power Apps? Can see the time is 7.35 a.m. Oh yeah, the time zone is all about following your Office 365 time zone, yeah? So because everything is under Office 365, so the time zone is actually set, okay, to, your, to follow your Office 365, 
All right. So you need to modify that in your Office 365 settings. Okay. Next one, can I use SQL statement to retrieve data for report? Oh yes, definitely. Okay, if you use SQL statement to retrieve data for report, that means okay, the connection that you make in your Power BI must be SQL. All right, you can connect to other types of resources. Uh, depends on your database connection. If you connect to an Oracle, then the SQL statement will be a PL SQL. If you are connecting to Microsoft SQL Server, there's going to be TSQL. Right, you can even connect today to Azure, let's say, uh, Cosmos DB and whatnot, which uses the SQL API. All right, so yes, you cannot, but you cannot use SQL statement to connect to, let's say, Excel. All right, Excel, maybe you have to formulate the, 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 the blank query first, you know, and then you submit that. Excel is just connecting to the whole table, right? And then you clean up using your Power Query. Okay. Uh, the next question is I, oh wow, this is detailed. Uh, I failed to manually or auto refresh a PBI Power BI dashboard and uh, in Power BI service, which the dashboard is having mixed data sources from SQL and SharePoint. The error message says, wow, a lot of um, data access error. Okay, um, I guess when you say refreshing, uh, I'm not sure whether you are doing the refreshing directly in your Power BI de uh, desktop or you are talking about the auto refresh on the cloud. Because auto refresh on the cloud or whatsoever, you need a data gateway, yeah? Manual or auto, you cannot uh, refresh on the cloud. I'm referring to the reports that you have already published onto the cloud, right? So you cannot, as you can see, let me show you my Power BI as well, yeah? I just go on to my Power BI. In my Power BI here, you can see, let's say my order, my report here, right? Now, if you want to refresh the data here, right? Okay, this is actually just a report, okay? My computer report here. But if you want to refresh your data, so it's not here, I have to go back to my workspace there, right? I'm gonna go back to my data set. So I need to go to my data set, which is here, same thing. This is my data set, and I need to click on there. Can you see schedule refresh or refresh now? So when I click schedule refresh, right? Look at this. Can you see schedule refresh in the details here? It's all disabled, I cannot schedule refresh. You can be automated because I do not have a gateway. Gateway is not present. You see, I cannot even manually refresh it. Okay, even like clicking triple dot here and refresh now, I'll get an error. Okay, this is actually when you have republished it. The only way you can refresh, right, is to open the report again in your local Power BI desktop here and click this refresh button. Okay, this is not the actual way of refreshing when you go production in your report. And your report production record, okay, you're not supposedly to refresh like that. Every time open your report again locally on your laptop in your Power BI desktop, then you go and refresh. After refresh already, you still have to publish and overwrite again on the cloud. Supposedly on the cloud, they are able to auto refresh or whatever, but you need a gateway, right? So I presume that when you receive that error, right, says that the pipeline or whatever, the, the error in your SharePoint, you've got a mixture of SharePoint and SQL. Maybe let, let's say I presume that you already have a gateway, right? You have to check your gateway and you have to check maybe, right, okay, the link, you know, the URL to your particular SharePoint, right? So I can see that you even share that, okay, you are from BASF, uh, I, I presume. Uh, probably you have attended my training before. Okay? I do believe probably you need to actually go and check out, okay, your uh, SharePoint uh, um, uh, URL, okay, what has been happening in the uh, in the connection in the background yeah i think um, my apologies because looking at your question here right i can see that you already have a gateway because there's a dmgw there the pipeline so something is wrong that the access error i believe it's um probably you may not have enough uh credential your no permission or maybe the url you have to recheck that by opening up your desktop power bi desktop there okay and re-evaluate from there right try to click a refresh manually from power bi desktop and publish it and let's see how okay okay next one is there any offline feature for power apps possible for developer to develop power apps locally without any internet access and sync to cloud after that yes um, microsoft actually do started with that but recently microsoft already say the power app studio which is the app that you can download and um, do it locally just like how power bi works like this you see in power bi this is actually offline. I got no internet. I can still do first. Then I save locally. Then when I've got internet, then only I publish, yeah? But right now, um, Power Apps, right, okay? I do believe the app, not sure whether it's still downloadable. Let me check that out, okay? If I go to my uh, Microsoft Store, 
it's available in Microsoft Store all this while. So if I go to search, let's say Power Apps, there you go. This Power Apps, if I'm mistaken, right, okay, it's not the studio, you know, this is actually the app to, wait, hang on, this, I think, is this a, a creator? I think it's the creator app, I think. Okay, let me just, because I've already installed it, okay, I, I never remove it. Let me click launch here. I say this is an installed app. I'm not sure whether the studio is still working because Microsoft announced that already. Okay, I can click on new here. When I click new, you see that yeah, they still bring me to web, you know. They still bring me to the web. Mm, they no longer, you see everything when you click this connection flows, they, they are connecting to the web, yeah, no, no longer, yeah. Because as far as I remembered, okay, vividly that Microsoft already announced back then that uh, uh, this Power App Studio offline application that you, we use as a tool has already been deprecated. Okay, so yeah, it's totally on, on, online already. Okay, but I believe that the, uh, the app is still there. It's just that when you create it for the first time, you have to register the app directly on the cloud, then maybe work on it using the app. Okay, but it's going off soon, right? <clears throat> okay. Excuse me, uh, next one. <clears throat> How Power BI collect and translate unstructured data and is it able to convert and visualize them into the desired dashboard? Okay. Okay, now, you're talking about big data right now. You want to talk about how Power BI collects and translate unstructured data. Okay, if we talk about unstructured data, right, okay, it's all about in the back end storage. How Power BI connects to your unstructured storage. Okay, let's, to in, in my um, experience, right, I can only quote like, let's say a few. Let's talk about Hadoop, yeah? If you, if your unstructured data is in Hadoop, you can only use Azure HD inside to connect to your Hadoop, uh, your Hadoop uh, file. There is a natural HDFS file system connection to your Hadoop file system as well, all right? That is for Hadoop. But what if your unstructured data, let's say in a more dramatic way, a more simplified way, let's say Azure Cosmos DB, document-based DB, all right? There is a natural linkage also where you can connect your Power BI to that because all these unstructured data, they are all loaded and queried as JSON. They're all in JavaScript object notation. It's all in JSON, right? So Power BI is just able to read all that in a form of JSON and you are, you, you need that, that so-called um, transformation in order for you to be able to read all that JSON properties into a proper um, a document that Power BI can uh, maybe convert into some sort of like a table and then visualize that. Okay, so unstructured data, because in that way, it's, it's, it's quite a um, wide area. So Power BI is only on the front end. I believe that you need to have an in uh, the middleman kind of a, a service in between to actually fetch that out. So um, let's say for, the, for example, I, I'm Microsoft, so I will talk about Azure. So you need uh, your data scientist or your data engineer to do all that ETL thingy using data bricks or data factory to output the data from your unstructured Okay, uh, away, then use Azure Stream Analytics and stream directly the data which have been processed out to your Power BI. So it's it's not direct, so, okay. The only way you can directly do that is uh, Power BI connect through my, uh, Azure HD Insight or the Azure HDFS, okay. Next one, um, for data stored in SharePoint list, we need to ensure the end users have access to add, edit, delete records. How can we avoid people tampering with the database if they came across the SharePoint where we store the data used in Power Apps. Yes, you're right, okay? For those users, right, who are going to use your Power Apps to submit data, edit the data, or delete the data, they need to have access, okay, to, uh, to the background, okay, to the back-end SharePoint list. But you now want to avoid people to tamper with the so-called database if they came across the SharePoint. Okay, now this is actually going to be a wide topic here. There is actually one way for you to do that, okay? Which is you do not get to grant every single user able to go and connect to SharePoint. You can pre-build a connection, right, okay? To SharePoint only using one single user account. Maybe use, maybe the, the person who is uh, the admin or whatever. So that means every user when they use the app, right, okay? In the back end scene, right? They are not using that particular user A, B, C, D, E's own account to connect to SharePoint. In the back end, okay, the same connection to impersonating that, 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 that administrator or the owner, right, to the SharePoint, you see? So like I say, you got 10 users, user A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, okay, until J. But all 10 users using the Power Apps, right, okay, 
the connection to SharePoint is still based on user X because user X is the only user has access to it. That's it. So these users, when they use the Power Apps okay, to insert records and to do all that, right? They don't realize it. They thought, that, oh yeah, I've got access. But when they manually go and log into SharePoint, want to go into that, huh, their permission is down to read only or zero or whatever. Okay, you got that? Okay, so it's easy for you to do impersonation. It's not necessary for you to connect to SharePoint always with individual different users uh, connection. Okay, you can assign a connection specifically to impersonate one particular user only. Okay. Next question, let's say if you have Dynamics 365 sales and plan to build a Power Apps on top of it with the latest license plan. We still need to buy the Power Apps license, right? Uh, yes, correct. Um, I believe that the Power Apps license, right, okay, you have to actually check with your LAR, right, your reseller about uh, how your Dynamics 365 sales, okay, that you uh, have, maybe I'm not sure whether that comes together with the Power Apps license with the number of, uh, of it there. So you have to check with your LAR, okay, because um, um, any licensing questions about the pricing and all that, I can always revert to the, um, to the website because I'm just a certified technical trainer. I'm not into the pre-sales and all that. So I may not be the best person to answer a question about pricing and, and also uh, in terms of uh, structuring your, your, your um, environment, yeah? So I'm only uh, a technical person, okay? So I can teach you guys on functionality, how you build this, how you do that, and how do you implement, okay? Okay, so next one, I want to know more about Power Platform. Sign up for, yeah, correct. So um, please take note that uh, Randy, all right, he is one of uh, the, the moderators, okay? He is uh, one of the key person. Uh, uh, he has already um, posted, okay, uh, about the link on how you can register. Okay, so next one would be, uh, yes, is there any way to make the Power BI dashboard refresh every one minute instead of every 30 minutes? Okay, no, for now, there's no way for it to control the entire Power BI dashboard to refresh so frequent in, in up to that manner because Microsoft put a block onto it, right? Because this is online cloud and you do not want to increase the traffic for that. The only way that I can talk about having a Power BI dashboard that seems to be real time is you connect to real time streaming service. All right, on a dashboard, you can have a real-time streaming service, but it's not the whole dashboard, yeah? It's the tile that you pin to a dashboard. So let me show you, let's say in my Power BI, how do you do that? Okay, let's say in my dashboard, I don't have a dashboard yet, so sorry. Let me create that, uh, let me build a dashboard here. So let's say I just go back to my workspace here, okay? So in my workspace, I want to create a new dashboard, okay? Oh yeah, one more thing, cancel. I don't want to build a dashboard already. I want to show you this in a new, can you see this? Ah, you can actually create a new data set right now called streaming data set so that you can build a visual that directly comes from a real time data. Okay. And then this data set, right? Okay. You connect it to your dashboard. So with the visuals, the tiles that you embed on your dashboard, right? Which comes from this so called streaming data set. So as long as you got new data goes, goes into your data in the background, this streaming will push the data directly to your visual and the visual will immediately refresh. So, but your whole dashboard is still in place. Okay, it makes your dashboard looks very brilliantly, you know, like real time. But your whole dashboard doesn't refresh. It's only certain tiles that is connected to your streaming data, then only it will refresh. Not your entire dashboard. Okay, your dashboard doesn't have that feature that allows you to 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 refresh so frequently. Okay. Next one. Okay, I think I can have only time to uh, answer the last two question. Okay. So can create a form using Power Apps for SharePoint list? Definitely, all right, definitely, because Power Apps is in everywhere in SharePoint, right? In SharePoint, every time there's a list record, right you can do that. Uh, maybe maybe uh, let me do a quick one. I'll just show you my very simple SharePoint site, which I have it blank, nothing much in there. Okay, so let's say I go to this. So maybe as you can see, like I go to here, right? Okay, uh, into my, maybe one of the lists here, let's say I've got this list called a task list, let's say. So if I task list here, right, as you can see, now this one is a classic task list, yeah? So sorry for that. This classic task list, right, as you can see, it's still using info path. How do I know it's classic? Because they still run on ribbon, right? Quite a number of uh, lists on SharePoint is still classic. So it's not a good um, example here. Let me go to my, let's say, okay, just a library, normal document library here. This is a document library, right? And you can see Power Apps is everywhere in SharePoint, even Power Automate also. 
some of you guys, your SharePoint might be still show the word flow instead of automate because you haven't got that. Microsoft haven't rolled out that 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 update to you guys. Mine is already rolled out because my my own um, subscription it's uh, always getting the latest one. So uh, mine is called that yeah, Power Automate already. You guys may still see flow. Don't worry, it's still the same thing, right? Power Apps is still here. As you can see, customize the form. Okay, so it's all it's everywhere. Okay, Power Apps integration to SharePoint it's seamless. Okay. And the last question, I have developed Power App and it's working at uh, and it working at Samsung uh, A5, okay? But the camera is not function in Samsung A uh, A50 is different model model, okay? The camera only facing me and cannot switch to the front. Why? Okay. Now this is due to the fact okay, that the camera uh, content, okay, the camera control that you added onto your Power Apps, right? You have to use your formula, right? Okay, to make sure okay, that you say switch there's an actually switch function for you to switch to the front and the back camera okay uh, i do believe right okay, depending on certain um camera model right maybe your samsung a5 i'm not sure whether there's a front camera probably is only the back camera right but for certain models when you've got front and the back okay i remember that i've demonstrated also in my course again okay, that there is a function you need to call it okay, to switch the camera to the front all right, so you have to refer to the camera object. Maybe you provide a one button there in your in your uh, for uh, in your power apps there, and a clicking of the button will toggle the front, and then click again back, and then click again front, click again back, something like that. Okay, you have to just switch, right, between the front facing camera and the back uh, facing camera. So it's it's able to do that, no problem. Okay. Okay, so guys, um, I think I have got not enough time to cover more questions and all that okay but uh, please do let me uh, let my 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 guys know right uh, we've got very helpful people in the back end here okay my producers in the background i need to thank them okay mr randy and mr lucas uh, and, and kevin okay and the rest of the people in infotrack uh, this is a, has been a very good uh, webinar i'm sure you guys have actually seen quite something on it and please do um, revert back to your individual uh, individual salesperson. I hope to see you guys in my training. Okay, I am sure and very, very definite okay, that I'll be able to share to you guys a lot of things because the training is actually a very long training. It's five days, right? In five days, a lot of things can happen, all right? So uh, I wish okay, that you guys uh, will be able to explore more in Power Platform. It's a very good platform, right? Uh, Microsoft has done a great job in uh, promoting this, and uh, that's why uh, that's what we are here, and that's what I'm here as well. So make sure that you guys um, will, uh, yeah, snatch the opportunity. I do believe that uh, um, InfoTrack is going to propose you with uh, some cool offerings again for this course. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, Kevin, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, there will be a recording available, which will be shared later. All right. So thank you very much again, once again, okay, for your valuable two hours. I'm not sure how much I've demonstrated whether it will be valuable to you guys, but thank you very much again. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.